Magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat at welcome pong muli sa isa na namang edisyon ng Kalingang Katribu Legal Diaries. Ako po si Elmer Navarro Manuel at ang pag-uusapan natin ngayon ay tungkol sa mga batas na may kaugnayan sa eleksyon. Kasi syempre next year eh, talaga namang pukpukan na dahil uh, magbobotohan na kung sino yung magiging mga bagong leader ng bansa natin. And uh, para ipaliwanag sa atin kung ano nga ba itong mga election laws na ito, Kasama natin ulit ang associate lawyer ng Aranas Cruz, Araneta Parker, and Faustino Law Offices na si Attorney Alfred Campagnano. Attorney, good afternoon po. Uh, good afternoon, Sir Elmer. Alright, welcome back, Sir. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> okay. Uh, ito, Attorney, election loss. Uh, medyo, alam ko, pakiramdam ko dito sa election loss na to, masalimuto kasi parang... Marami yata itong mga requisitos o requirements ba, kumbaga, kung paano mangyayari dito sa mga um, flow ng uh, ating uh, pag-file ng Certificate of Candidacy hanggang sa pagboto. Ayan. Uh, at saka yung, syempre, yung kampanya na rin, kasama na rin doon. So, Attorney, uh, para siguro mag-start muna tayo, no? ano, ba, ano, ba, ano, ano ba itong mga election laws na ito? Okay. Um, actually, masyad na madami yan, no? Mm-hmm. Kasi when you talk about elections, uh, you're basically encompasses a lot of things. National, local, and then syempre, sa lahat ng aspeto din ng election, may mga batas na nag-govern dyan, mm-hmm. no? So, ang, ano, siguro for purposes lang ng usapan natin today, ang, masa- ang mapapanggit ko would be una is yung Philippine Constitution. Okay. Kasi syempre, di ba, dyan mo makikita ang nagsasabi on your right to suffrage. Mm-hmm. Later on, we will hopefully be discussing. And then, afterwards, we have the primary law, uh, which is the Omnibus Election Code. Mm-hmm. And of course, yung mga subsequent amendments. This pertains sa main law on elections. So, dito mo makikita yung general principles on uh, filing ng candidacy, mm-hmm. kung saan ka mag-aano on. Uh, election propaganda, etc. Tapos meron din syempre tayo yung party list system na. Okay. Especially for the for these coming elections na kung saan magkakaroon of course ng, ng uh, re-elections for mm-hmm. uh, the House of Representatives. And of course, as we all know, na in the House of Representatives, meron tayo yung district representatives. Mm-hmm. And of course, you have your party list system mm-hmm. which comprises around 20% Uh, of the body or of the House of Representatives. Tapos nito, meron din tayo yung Voters Registration Act. Mm-hmm. This is yung article ko, I think, two weeks ago dito rin sa Dilip Tribune mm-hmm. na kung saan uh, the Voters Registration Act pertains to of course, from the name itself the registration. Oh, oh, tama. So, ang importante lang naman, I suppose, for everyone to know here is that there is a system of continuing voters registration in the country na pipigilan lang yan within 120 days before the regular elections. Mm-hmm. So, so that's why if I'm not mistaken, nag-end ang voters registration on September 30. 30, oo. Uh-huh. No? Or 90 days in cases of uh, of uh, special elections. Mm-hmm. And then of course, meron din tayo yung Fair Election Act which serves as a guidelines on election propaganda. So, Itong Fair, Fair Election Act, dito magsasabi yung mga limitations on spending, ganong kalaki dapat yung mga plat, yung mga karatula mm-hmm. or yung mga posters na kung saan nakatapa lang mukha mo. Mm-hmm. O ikaw ay tatakbo, no? <laughs> <laughs> as a, you know, as an, exe- as an official government. Mm-hmm. And then, as to uh, the institution that, that monitors um, election concerns, Mm-hmm. Then obviously we are aware of the independent constitutional, independent constitutional. I cannot stress that enough. Independent, independent na constitutional, constitutional pa. Constitutional commission, mm-hmm. which is the commission on elections. 
Okay, so ibig sabihin, independent. So, dapat walang kahit anong impluensya mula yes. sa kahit anong branches of government natin. Okay, so yung trabaho ngayon ng COMELEC, attorney, ano, syempre, since uh, ito nga, ngayon may pandemya, so medyo nag, uh, ano sila, yung filing ng certificates of candidacy ng mga tatakbo sa eleksyon, eh, nilipat, di ba? Dinala sa Sofitel tent para maiwasan yung mga super spreader events. So, ang pangunahing uh, task talaga ng COMELEC is to oversee the elections. Tama po ba yun? Yes. Um, pra- kalaro naman eh, no? From the name itself, mm-hmm. uh, sinasabi Commission of Elections. So, ang pinaka-power, the main purpose why this commission exists mm-hmm. is to enforce and administer the laws and regulations relative to the conduct of an election, okay. a plebiscite, an initiative, a referendum, and recall elections. But of course, di ba, syempre may mga ibang powers din naman yan. Mm-hmm. Kasi hindi naman tayo lagi, araw-araw lagi election. Tama. Oh. Diba? Kasi uh, six years, kapag six years ang term ng president and vice president, mm-hmm. even I think senators, and then three years for the House of Representative members. Mm-hmm. So, hindi naman yan laging may election. Oh. No? So, ano yung ginagawa nila in the interim? That's why, narabanggit ko kanina, meron tayo yung Voters Registration Act na kung saan they also handle the registration of voters. So, yan yung very important and it is a very important task mm-hmm. because it's also the commission that handles who should be included in the voters list or who should be excluded mm-hmm. just at least. And that's important because, di ba, alam naman siguro natin, narinig natin yung mga patay na pala, bumbong na no. from, I don't know, kung nasa heaven or hell yung man mga, siya. Yung mga bumabangon mula sa mga cementeryo. Nagugulat lang tayo, bumaboto. <laughs> so, yung mga yeah. ganyan. Magugulat ka, may kita mo sa lista mo yung lolo mo. Eh, mga siguro, sampung. Bumaboto oh, pa. Bumaboto pa. <laughs> diba? So, yan. Yeah, so, very important yung list na yan. And that's always a source of controversy. Mm-hmm. Especially, well, in these elections, no? Kasi oh. very... Ano yan? Um, Siyempre, mainit ang labanan. No? Oh. Basically, a, 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 a battle for power and control over government. Mm-hmm. Siyempre, aside from that, if merong concerns or issues, electro, electoral protests na tinatawag, mm-hmm. uh, sa kanila din kadalasan dumadaan ang mga ganitong klaseng complaints. So, mm-hmm. they have jurisdiction to resolve these things. Generally, ah, of course, because there are certain elective positions mm-hmm. that are na kapag may dispute are hindi naman na sa kanila dumadaan. Mm-hmm. Tapos sila rin syempre aside from handling the registration of voters, they're also handling yung registration ng mga political parties. Okay. So sila yung nagde-determine if they should be registered in accordance with the law or sila rin yung nagde-determine if they meet the qualifications kung they intend to uh, participate in the electoral process through the party list system. Mm-hmm. So, yun yung mga other pa, ano niya, no? other powers, jobs. But of course, hindi mo pwedeng masabi na during the elections, alam mo naman, medyo mainit yan. At oh. it has to be done in uh, orderly, eh, uh, in an orderly fashion. So, uh, the, um, one of the powers as well of Comelec is to enlist the aid of our law enforcement okay. by deputizing them. No, kaya may mga makikita ka na may mga rumoronda mm. every time na uh, during elections. So, yan yung mga, well, generally, no, yun yung mga powers na nakikita kong ay, dapat aware ng mga viewers natin. Mm-hmm. Uh, powers of the public. Okay. Eh, attorney, meron bang kaibahan yung mga regional COMELEC sa national COMELEC? Kunwari, um, pareho ba sila na, kunwari, may mga, let's say, sa mga lokal? Of course, sa mga probi-probinsya, di ba? Diyan yung mga medyo talagang mainitan yung labanan. Minsan talagang family feud na yung nangyayari. So, yung mga regional COMELEX ba, eh, pwedeng manghingi ng tulong sa national uh, COMELEC, yung naka-base dito sa Manila, para ano, or meron silang sarili nilang pwede silang mag-decide kung hindi ka pwede talagang tumakbo dahil 
Magkakagulo lang yung buong ano nyo, munisipalidad nyo o yung buong probinsya nyo, parang ganun. Buti na lang, uh, Sir Elmer, nagpa- <laughs> nag-volunteer lawyer ako. <laughs> At sa surprise ako minsan sa mga tanong mo. <laughs> okay, nag- na, na ano ko lang eh, bigla ako lang naisip eh. <laughs> so, yung mga ganyan, no, from my experience, mm-hmm. syempre, parang normally, kaya nagbabranch out yung mga different comedy. no may ba parang regional oh. offices sila kasi sila na talaga yung nagahandle mm-hmm. na ano ng concerns especially on local levels but of course syempre during local elections kasabay din niya ang national elections mm-hmm. so since simultaneous siya nangyayari uh, nagkaroon din ng simultaneous na monitoring mm-hmm. by the same body okay. so parang split personality sila no mm-hmm. so if there are issues involving the national aspect of the elections dumadaan siya through the regional offices and they course the issues to the national office. Mm-hmm. If talagang hindi nila kayang i-resolve. Okay. So parang isipin nyo lang siya parang some sort of a escalation system mm-hmm. na kung saan if talagang hindi nila kinakaya at that level alone, then pwede nilang iba to yan patas. Kasi remember, they're just simply just like uh, they're just basically a branch. Tama. Oh. There's still one commission anyway. Pero kaya sila na ganyan, of course, it's a matter of logistical efficiency na kung saan, as much as possible, they resolve it at that level na. Hmm, tama, okay. Alright, attorney, mabalik tayo dun sa nabanggit mo kanina, no? yung right to suffrage. Uh, pwede bang paki-enlighten kami? Yung mga nanonood na talaga namang yung iba, eh, first time pa lang boboto. Yan. Marami ngayon yan, yung mga first time boboto. Marami, marami oh. talagang boboto na. Oh, so ano ano ba tong right of suffrage na to? Uh... Well, <laughs> as interesting as the word sounds, no, it's mm-hmm. not about suffering. Ayun nga. <laughs> and it originated from the word suffrage, meaning the right to vote. But of course, ang laging gidi-drill sa amin ng political law teachers namin sa law school is suffrage is not just the right to vote. but also includes the right to be voted upon. Ayan. So, basically, the people who are filing their certificates of candidacy, sir, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think the last day is today. Today, yes. Oh. Uh, today, no? So, they're basically exercising their right to suffrage as well. So, there are two aspects to it, basically. The right to vote and the right to be voted upon. Now, where does this... this where do these rights... Um, Uh, where do these rights uh, fit in no? mm-hmm. in the electoral process? The common understand the common example would be this election, mm-hmm. national and local elections. But again, kaya ako, naba- kaya ako lang gusto yano yan because not only in elections do the uh, sorry not only during national national and local elections do uh, do citizens participate in the Uh, in in exerting their right to suffrage. Yes, yes. In, in their right to suffrage, no? Because again, katulad na nabanggit ko kanina, there are plebiscites, mm-hmm. initiatives, or referendums, or recalls. So, yung mga yun, so for example, elections ito, you're going to select your leaders mm-hmm. uh, for the position of president, vice president, senators, house of representatives. But also, You also, as a citizen, have the right to vote in people's in uh, in in cases of a people's initiative. Na kung saan in in people's initiative, this is a way for the general public to introduce amendments to the constitution, should they wish to, or to introduce a uh, legislation, whether at a local or national level. Mm-hmm. So, for example, for my divorce law. and then hindi pumapasa sa Congress, if there is enough political will in the general public, they may be the one to enact that law okay. under a people's initiative. And of course, so initiative, ang tawag natin dyan, or people's initiative. Mm-hmm. So saan papasok ang right to vote ng mga citizens? Once the people's initiative has, has been successful in accordance with the standards provided in the Constitution, then... ipapasa yan to the general public. The people will have to vote, no? Whether this legislation or this amendment to the Constitution will have to be approved 
or will have to be introduced. So basically, uh, pag meron ka ng initiative for amendments to the Constitution or initiative of creating a national or local uh, legislation, then the the enactment of the said law will have to be approved by the people, the general public. Mm-hmm. So dito papasok yung tinatawag natin na plebiscite or referendum. The difference primarily relies on plebiscite lang ang tawag mo if the subject of the the movement or the initiative is an amendment, a revision, or an overhaul mm-hmm. of the Philippine Constitution. Referendum naman ang tawag mo kapag approval or rejection of a proposed legislation, whether national or local in nature. So, yan lang yung mga gusto emphasizing the right to suffrage. So, that's basically on your right to vote. It's, uh, uh, um, of course, the right to be voted upon is, oh, ito na. Ito na, yung mga na, nagtatakbuhan na. Certificates of candidacy. Uh, And the right to suffrage does not end every every election mm-hmm. because there are other ways for this political right to be exercised. Yun lang naman ang gusto kong maipahiwating sa mga manunod. Alright, so sana nalinawan yung mga nanonood sa atin today. Uh, pero bago tayo magpatuloy, magbe-break lang tayo saglit at wag po kayong alis at babalik pong muli ang Kalingang Katribu Legal Diaries. Botomoto Halalan 2022, The Daily Tribune Special Coverage. Magpabakura kayo. This public service advisory is brought to you by Daily Tribune and 100.3 RJFM. Magandang araw mga katribu! Narito na ang mga makakasama nyo tuwing umaga sa programang Gising Na. Roy Pelovelo, Comfy Manalo, Chinky Mangkukang, Vernon Velasco, Kim Sancha at Chirk Balagtas. Abangan ang programang Gising Na mula alas 8 hanggang alas 9 ng umaga sa Facebook page ng Daily Tribune. Inabas ng mainit na kape at samahan kami sa inyong pag-almusal, mga katribo. Sama-sama natin alamin ang mga natatagong istorya sa mga latest na kaganapan sa loob at labas ng bansa. Simula ng bawat umaga with good vibes sa mga informative and recreational segments dito sa ating programa. Maaari nyo rin ibahagi sa amin ang inyong opinion via Daily Tribune Facebook page at Tribunal sa YouTube. Makichika na rin sa latest showbiz happenings, mga katribo. Kaya naman, magkita-kita po tayo mula lunes hanggang biyernes, alas 8 hanggang alas 9 ng umaga. At pagsama-sama po tayo sa... Gising na! Magpabakura kayo! Botomoto Halalan 2022, The Daily Tribune Special Coverage. Nagbabalik po muli ang Kalingang Katribu Legal Diaries at syempre kasama pa rin natin si Atty. Alfred Campagnano tungkol sa mga election laws dito sa bansa natin. Alright Atty. Eto, um, since uh, last day of filing ngayon ng mga COCs, ano, magawin naman tayo dun sa mga gawain itong mga, syempre eleksyon, yung botohan. So siguro ang unang dali natin dapat dito is... Uh, ano ba yung mga qualifications o disqualification ng isang botante? Ayan. Botante. Oo, botante. Ito yung mga boboto. Kasi marami talagang mga batang boboto ngayon eh. Kalat na kalat sa social media. <laughs> Talaga pinagalang mo yung boboto. Ah. Oo, boboto. Ayan. Ay medyo linawin lang natin. Baka magkamali na naman ng ano, magkarayot sa social media. <laughs> <laughs> so, eh. Okay, so, yung, uh, all this? Qualifications, requirements. Ah, requirements ng mga boboto. Yan. Uh, so, ang eligibility ng mga tao that has the right to vote are primarily uh, governed by the concept of God. Mm-hmm. The Article 5, uh, Section 1 of the 1987 Constitution, na, which provides that they must be, of course, a Philippine citizen. Mm-hmm. Now, Philippine citizen, whether they are natural born or naturalized, as long as they are already a Philippine citizen, they are entitled to vote. Second is they must at least be 18 years of age, mm-hmm. at least six months immediately 
preceding the election. So basically, six months before the election, you should already be 18, 18. years old. So hindi ka pwedeng, ah, pwede ako magpumoto kasi mag-18 na ako by the time na uh, election, election na. day na. Mm-hmm. That's not a lot. Hindi ka papayagan for purposes of registration. Baka pwede ka mag-register but you're not, able, you're not eligible to vote for the 2022 election. Mm-hmm. Next is, you must be a resident at the place where you intend to vote at least six, ma- uh, six months prior to the election. So six months before the election day, you must not only be 18 years old, but you must also be a resident um, <clears throat> for at least uh, six months um, prior to the election day. So the point nun is, dapat nagtatagal ka na doon because you will be voting in that area in the di ba parang naka ano ka sa district Oo, or naka tama. ano ka sa locality na yun so dapat resident ka doon sa sa kung saan ka magbo-vote kaya very important di ba na, na na importante na ilipat mo ang registration mo if you're already residing from one place mm-hmm. to another parang for example I think ako kailangan ko na ilipat uh, hindi sa bagay considered ko pa din naman na resident sa bagay <laughs> So, Malayula yung botohan. Uh, Malayula yung registration. Uh, no? election day. <laughs> so, what else? Uh, so, res- residents, then you also must be a, a Philippine resident. So, hmm. resident ka dapat at, uh, sorry, you must be residing at least six months na, no? Para oh, sa election. Okay. But obviously, and consequently, you must be a Philippine resident at least one year mm-hmm. immediately preceding the election. So you may be residing in the locality to which you will intend to vote, no? At least six months. Pero kung paano kung kakalipat mo lang pala? So dapat one year pa lang. The idea of this period, of that one year period, if I recall correctly, is it should suffice that you are more or less aware of the Philippine affairs. Mm-hmm. At least may idea ka on, ano, may idea ka kung ano nangyayari sa Pilipinas in order for you to quote-unquote, make a knowledgeable choice in the election. Because uh, the running theory is people vote because they think a leader uh, that they decide based on, you know, the qualities of leadership Uh-oh. and based on how they think they will perform in handling Philippine affairs. So, yun yung idea ng one-year period na yan. Baka naman kasi kakalipat mo lang from the states. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Oo nga. Tama. Hindi ka pala ala- aware. Kung baka hindi ka pala aware sa Parmali, for example. <laughs> hey, Parmali. Hindi mo alam ang balita ay, dito. Kasi hindi ka nalang magbaboto-boto ka, di ba? Oo. Oh. So, ang idea na is parang hindi ka aware. So, you're not really qualified to choose the leader. no? And obviously, may catch-all provision tayo na there are disqualifications Uh, under special laws. Mm-hmm. If, uh, hindi ka dapat uh, hindi ka dapat pa babagsak under these uh, standards. So, what are these disqualifications? First is, basahin ko na lang ha, kasi mm. yeah, hindi ko kami sabi. <laughs> <laughs> pwede ah, pwede. Under the Voters Registration Act, one is, a person is disqualified to vote if he has been sentenced by final judgment for an imprisonment of not less than one year. Okay. Ba? But if they have already served at least five years of their sentence, then they automatically reacquire the right to vote. Mm-hmm. Next is a person who has been adjudged to meaning, di ba, kung nag-commit ka ng crime, if the penalty is more than a year, you're disqualified. Okay. If you've served at least one, at least five years of your sentence, you reacquire your right to vote. Okay. So qualified. these are ordinary crimes. Mm-hmm. The second disqualification are your political crimes. Diba? You are basically prohibited <laughs> from oh. voting if you basically committed a political crime. What are these? This la- disloyalty to the government, mm-hmm. such as rebellion, sedition, Violation of the firearms law or mm-hmm. crimes against national security. So, kung terorista ka, tapos na convict ka under the Human Security Act, then hindi ka pwedeng mag-vote. Mm-hmm. Yet again, there is a qualification na you acquire, your reacquire, sorry, you reacquire your right to vote 
at least five years after you've served mm-hmm. your sentence. And then obviously for reasons, uh, for yeah. And next is for obvious reasons, then yung mga insane persons or those who are incompetent uh, persons to declare uh, to vote. Mm-hmm. So there is a presumption that those who are minors are hindi sila discerning enough of Atama. the political affairs of the Philippines, so they're not allowed to vote under the law. So they're basically an incompetent person for purposes of voting. And then of course, yung mga na-declare by competent authority ba na insane. Oh. So who are these competent authorities? Uh, for example, the court. Kasi there, are, there is a petition that you can have someone be declared as an insane. Okay. So, the, so that's one example no, of the competent authority that can declare a person to be insane. Now, there, are, there is an additional ano, uh, for overseas absentee voters. Mm-hmm. Remember, di ba, hindi lang yung mga tao sa Pilipinas ang um, ano um, pwede mag-vote under ano because in the constitution di ba it says there that the Philippines should develop a system mm-hmm. for which overseas Filipinos subject of course to qualifications provided for under the law will be able to participate so even if they are abroad di ba so there are disqualifications for these voters mm-hmm. Is if they basically renounce their Philippine citizenship. Uh, so okay. The one require first uh, first requirement is they have to be a Philippine uh, citizen. Mm-hmm. So they have lost their Filipino citizenship. So meaning if they lost it, whether they through no fault of their own mm-hmm. or they expressly renounce their Philippine citizenship. So meaning talagang sinabi nila na they're basically we. Uh, for going or for keeping their Philippine citizen, uh, Philippine citizenship. So this normally happens if you know you're in the process of uh, acquiring, say, U.S. citizenship or a uh, foreign citizenship. Nakonsan you have to swear your allegiance to the country Tama, that you oh. want to be a new citizen of. No, so yun siya. Next is an immigrant or a permanent resident recognized in the said country. So, yung mga green card holder. Mm-hmm. That's one example. And any disqualifications no, mentioned above that is declared by foreign competent authority. So, meaning, the, for example, for example, insane. Okay. <laughs> the insane. Uh-huh. So, hindi, hindi, hindi necessary that it has to be the Philippine courts to declare a person to be insane to be disqualified. Mm-hmm. So if it's a foreign court that does so, then they are also disqualified ah, because okay. they are insane. <laughs> Yo honor <laughs> talaga. Yung mga disqualification. Okay. All right, ito attorney. Ayun, ah, malinaw na para dun sa mga boboto ha. Ayun. Na sana narinig niyo yung mga qualifications niyo at yung mga pwede niyong i-disqualify para bumoto. All right, magawi ngayon tayo attorney dito sa mga tatakbo. Ano bang ba qualifications nitong mga pwedeng tumakbo para sa isang posisyon sa gobyerno? Kahit uh, mapa barangay chairman hanggang sa presidente ng Pilipinas. Ito, uh, alam ko, medyo madugo to, Tori. So, medyo bigyan mo lang kami ng uh, <laughs> konti lang. Uh, yeah, that is correct. Hindi ko na inano yung sa local officials. Oo. Oh. So, let's go to... National kagad. Hindi ko naman sinasabing hindi importante ang local ano ah. <laughs> I'm just saying na considering the scope oh, oh. Of, this, of this ano <laughs> of this program then I suppose mas interested ang mga viewers sa national Tama. elections. Mm-hmm. So depending on the position we go to the Philippine Constitution mm-hmm. to determine who is qualified to uh for, to run for office. So Let's start tayo sa baba. <clears throat> Let's start with the House of Representatives. Okay. The House of Representatives under the Philippine Constitution is in order to run for a to run for the position of uh, representative a member of the, oh. uh, the House of Representatives, then you must be a natural born citizen. Mm-hmm. So very important yung qualification na natural born citizen. 
because again uh, there are two kinds of fil- of uh, Filipino citizens you're natural born meaning you are Filipino by blood no or Philippine uh, Filipinization to like mm. sorry naturalization or, uh, naturalization mm. so meaning yan yung mga tao that actively uh, actively um, process their application to be considered as a Philippine uh, citizen so they has to, they have to be a natural born citizen So, um, so yun yun. So, Filipino by blood. Okay. Next is, at on the day of the election, they must at least be 25 years of age. So, Sir Elmer, pwede ka na, no? Oh, You're ma. at least 25 years of age. Baka <laughs> pwede mo pang ihabol ang inyong certificate of candidacy. De, doon na lang sa substitute. <laughs> natural born ka naman. Kita naman sa kulay, ah. attorney. No? <laughs> Kita naman sa kulay yung pagiging natural born natin. <laughs> natural born citizen, uh, Filipino ka naman mm-hmm. on the day of the election. Ito ang tanong, marunong ka naman magbasa. Yes. Diba? Able to read and write. Mm-hmm. That's one qualification. Ito, ito ah, seryosong tanong to si, uh, Sir Elmer. Are you a registered voter? Yes. Saan? Sa Marilao. <laughs> Kinig-tweets ko lang kasi may kita ko sa mga tao kilala ko eh na hindi registrado. Sa Marilao, actually. <laughs> dahil kahit sa Cavite na ako nakatira, hindi ko pa rin nalilipat yung... So, boboto ka naman? Yes. Sa Marilao, nga lang. Sa Bulacan. <laughs> Punta ka ng Bulacan on the oh, day of election. Tama. No? Okay. So, yun sa House of Representatives. Ngayon, for the, the senators, no? Basically, pareho lang. Mm-hmm. Able to read and write, registered voter. Ah, yeah, sorry, sorry. Uh, backtrack lang tayo. For the House of Representatives, members thereof, they have to be a resident no? ah, of the oh. place where they intend to be, uh, to represent mm-hmm. at least uh, one year preceding the election. Except, no? Except, if yung seat mo or you're vying for the membership in the House of Representatives by virtue of the party list system. Mm-hmm. Kasi syempre, di ba, the party list system is national, sectoral, or organizational representation. Mm-hmm. So, hindi sila bound by geography. No? So, that's that's why it's an... So, hindi nagpa-poll yung one-year requirement. Uh, one-year uh, resident. Uh-huh. Uh, residency requirement if you intend to be a member of the House of Representatives by virtue of the party list, uh, the party list system. Tama. Oh. Okay. So, for senators, no, it's the same. Able to read and write, mm-hmm. registered voter, and, and the only difference is, uh, sorry, natural board citizen on the day of the election, the only difference is the age requirement mm-hmm. and the residency requirement. We're in... Ang sinasabi natin dito is, for a senator, he or she must at least be 35 years of age. Okay. No? Prior to the, uh, sorry, already at least 35 years of age on the day of the election. No? Pagkakaiba to sa voters. Mm-hmm. At least be, uh, around six months before the election uh-huh. date, you should already be 18. Pero at least for candidacy, you should have uh, met the age requirement on the day of the election. Kasi mm-hmm. doon ka na nila iboboto. Mm-hmm. Diba? Yun yung idea niya. Registered voter din dapat sila. And at the same time, ang another difference is the residency requirement. They must be, in this case, since senators sila, no? Mm-hmm. National in scope, they must be a resident of the Philippines for at least two years. Oh, okay. Prior mm-hmm. to the, uh, prior to the election. Mm-hmm. Now, for the executive branch of government, which is the presidency and the vice president, they basically share you know, the same qualification. Mm-hmm. Na natural born citizen. For obvious reasons. Kasi ayaw mo naman, unless gusto mo, di ba Sir Elper? Oo nga. Na, <laughs> na, kung gusto mong na, hapon yung maging presidente mo, di mm-hmm. <laughs> ibaliwala na natin yung constitution na <laughs> So, natural born citizen of the Philippines, mm-hmm. of course, a registered voter, able to read and write. And at the same time, ano yung pagkakaiba? 
the age requirement. Mm-hmm. The age requirement is they must at least be 40 years of age okay. on the day of the election. And they must already be a resident of the Philippines ten, uh, for at least 10 years prior to the election. Mm-hmm. But again, for reasons na the time period is you, wa- you will be leaving the country. Tama. So one important factor here is you should be aware and you should be aware not just be aware no of whatever issues that are that you know that is being faced by the country but more or less you should be well versed mm-hmm. kaya siya 10 years no presumably kaya siya 10 years you should be well versed in the issues facing the country you should have already earned the trust of your fellow men mm-hmm. in order to be to lead the country kaya pansin mo di ang laki ng tinalon oh, oh, 2 tama. years 1 year and then 10 years because basically, ikaw ang magiging muka ng bansa. Tama, tama yan. <laughs> so, yun yung idea dyan kung bakit siya matagal. For vice president, uh, for the vice presidency, it's the same requirements. Mm-hmm. 40, uh, 40, at least 40, registered, natural born, and a resident of at least 10 years mm-hmm. prior to the election. Okay, alright. Ayan, malino na. So, yung mga nagbabalak pang mag-file ng COC dyan for... <laughs> Uh, presidency or for the vice presidency, eh, medyo isipin nyo rin muna kasi minsan may mga tinatag yung komilek na tinatawag nating mga nuisans. So, <laughs> kailangan Ay, medyo oh, ingat kayo dyan. Yan. Eh, di ba, Torni, mga past, siguro, mga past experiences mo dito sa mga nuisans na to, yung mga magpapagawa ng malaking lababo para mawala yung baha. <laughs> okay, kaya ko lang. Pag sabi mo nuisance candidate, mm-hmm. you know, there are standards okay. na kung saan, ano. So, it's not necessary na there are nuisance under the eyes of the law mm-hmm. because of whatever promises that these candidates have. Uh, that these candidates offer to the people offer para, oh. to the public. Mm-hmm. Although, yes, technically, they are no essences kasi <laughs> tayo nung malaking ilababo. Oo, oh, yung mga alien na darating dito sa Pilipinas dahil siya ang sinugo ng mga alien. Yung mga nangangako ng kung oh. ano-ano na hindi naman magagawa mm-hmm. or imposibleng magawa. Tama. Diba? Kasi technically, no essence sila. <laughs> but not legally speaking. Mm-hmm. No? Not legally speaking. Kasi pag sabi mo lang, ang idea lang niya is no essence candidates sila because for one reason or another, they are not really allowed to be candidates. Mm-hmm. A common example would be yung mga nagpa-file ng certificates of candidacy that does not have enough parang operating fund yeah, no, to yung... support an actual campaign. Tama, oo. Oh. Kasi syempre, di ba, may pera ka dang gagastusin dyan. Mm-hmm. So, kung wala ka man, kung wala ka naman pala, kung ang laman lang ng pera, ang laman lang ng banko mo is around, I don't know, 100,000 100, oh. pesos, then, pahingi naman, akaya rin manalit ka. Pero, then, you know, for, hindi mo kaya i-sustain yung campaign. Mm-hmm. But of course, there are other ways for you to fund the campaign, but of, you have to you know, you have to filter it uh, in accordance with the Fair Election Act and other laws because, of course, may mga limitations on political donations mm-hmm. and who can donate to political campaigns. Okay. Alright, ito, Torni, siguro malinaw na sa mga nanonood sa atin, ha? malinaw na yung mga requirements para sa mga boboto at para sa mga tatakbo. So, ito, Torni, ano mangyayari pagkatapos mag-file ng mga kandidato ng kanilang mga COC? Kampanyahan na ba kagad o meron pang parang grace period pa bago mag-start yung kampanya, yung official na oh, hindi campaign? Na, ano, hindi ko na abot sa review ko yan. <laughs> <laughs> Kasi, Pero diba, I suppose the next mm-hmm. step that we expect is the official campaign. Mm-hmm. Kaya may mga makikita-kita na rin tayo mga bulletin board. Ah, yung mga may mga campaign na. slogans, campaign jingle. Yan na, yung mga satel na ano subtle hints. Oh, salamat sa inyo, tas ang laki ng mukha, di ba? Oh. Which is a very interesting thing to bring out, uh, Sir Elmer, because hmm. lumalab na ang idea niya is, meron yung paano pumapasok ang premature, ano, premature campaigning. campaigning. That's a very interesting thing to say, because to me, wala, lumalabas na walang premature campaigning. 
Tama. <laughs> Ay, agree ako sa iyo, attorney, kasi, di ba, ngayon, actually, wala pa nga yung filing. Last month pa lang yata, may mga napapanood. Wala pang filing, alam natin kung sino mga tatak. Oo, oh, may mga napapanood ko na sa TV na bigla na lang lumilitaw na... Uh, ah, diba? nagpapasalamat diba, sa kanyang mga oh. nagawa daw ganyan. Mm, etc. So, eh, eh syempre kahit siguro naman kahit kahit bata 'yun, maiisip po. Tatakbo siguro 'to. Bakit nasa TV 'to? Itbulaga lang pinapanood ko kanina, bakit eto na 'yun? Ano? <laughs> We can surmise, mm-hmm. but of course, it's about the who actually files for their candidates. Mm, tama. And of course, yung mga ano yung mga supporters nila that kahit hindi pa nagpa-file eh may mga hmm. nag mga nag-uudyok na oh. sa kanila no para tumakbo. Yung mga ano kahit hindi alam nung tatakbong kandidato ay eh, naaakyat na. Pinipre- para sa ano lang, para sa classroom lang. Oh. So, Ino-nominate mo yung kaklase mong walang kaalam ano. <laughs> oh, tapos iya ano mo, magugulat na lang nanalo na pala. Okay. All right, attorney, um, pagbalik natin, uh, tribuno naman tayo, magbe-break lang tayo sa glit. Wag po kayo ng alis at babalik pong muli ang Kalingang Katribu Legal Diaries. Boto mo to, Halalan 2022, the Daily Tribune special coverage. This public service advisory is brought to you by Daily Tribune and 100.3 RJFM. Oh, vaccination, isolation, gotta keep up with my nutrition, gotta maintain my body condition, then I can take my vaccination. What do I choose? What do I take? As long as it is not a fake. AstraZeneca, Moderna, BioNTech, even Sinovac, okay now. Vaccination for the nation, no more isolation. With vaccination. This public service advisory is brought to you by Daily Tribune and 100.3 RJFM. Magpabakura kayo! Boto mo to, Halalan 2022, the Daily Tribune special coverage. Babalik pong muli ang Kalingang Katribo Legal Diaries at syempre kasama pa rin natin si Atty. Alfred Campagnano. Alright, Atty. Ito para sa ating Tribuno Trivia. Alright, the first presidential election by popular vote was on September 15, 1935 after the ratification of the 1935 Constitution of the Philippines. Manuel Quezon of the Nationalista Party emerged as the victor defeating previous president Emilio Aguinaldo who was elected president by the Malolos Congress. All right, ito attorney, siguro ito yung sa history natin. Ito yung unang-unang election siguro talaga to, no? Yes. Uh, siguro ano lang, ano ba? Hindi kasi rin ako history buff. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It comes to you know, uh, the election. Pero siguro ang ma-impart ko na lang would be the idea na the we as stated nga sa sa tribuno no mm-hmm. is basically a popular vote. Mm-hmm. So normally what I often hear from colleagues of mine who the, who does not have any interest to vote. Yes kasi sayang rin lang. Yan yung lang ah. sayang lang din yung vote. Isang vote lang naman ako what um, what then what else uh Then ano pa ang magiging effect niya? Tara. Na kung sa to me that's, that to me is that's a that's just a wrong kind of mentality. Tama. Na dapat maalis natin because 'di ba? 
the idea here is there is strength in numbers. Mm-hmm. You know, our, ano, our, you know, our ancestors. Oh, okay. <laughs> our, our predecessors, no? Fought for this model of government. Fought for democracy. Mm-hmm. So, if each and every one of us will treat this, uh, that kind of thing, will have that kind of thinking, then it's basically a, you know, a, spit in the face mm-hmm. na mga uh, sa ating Philippine history na kung saan ito sana nag-dictatorship na lang tayo and that's kind of worse no and that's the and I actually even hear some colleagues of mine na hindi kasi bagay ang demokrasya sa Pilipinas na kung saan dapat eh dictatorship na lang you see the importance of the vote is to bring the power or the the right to self-determination back to the general public. Tama. Because the idea here is that we are a country of the uh, for the people by the people. No? So, what is our the worst alternative that we can think of that stems from that small thought that our vote does not matter? The worst case scenario is that we really do end up in a dictatorship. Tama. And admittedly, there are certain benefits to a dictatorship. No? The idea na isa lang ang nag-design, oh. fast track siguro ang implementation and all that. As opposed to putting it in the powers of the general public. A collegiate body na kung saan mag-aaway-aaway pa, may mm. posting views, etc. You know, the limitations of these kinds, this kind of government is this kind. You know, that kind of leadership, a dictatorship mindset. Is maganda lang siya when makapaglagay ka talaga nga ng magandang leader dyan. Tama. But the, inter- the interesting thing and as history has proven to us is once a person gets hold of power, he more often than not, he tends to incl- to hold it. Mm-hmm. Attempts to hold it for as long as he can. And that is where abuses start. So, bakit ako nagiging overly dramatic about this thing? Because That is basically the ayaw nyo mang aminin <laughs> but that is basically the kind of government that you're basically wanting for the Philippines mm-hmm. should you want to this should you say and advocate for the idea that my vote does not count so at the very least we should respect our history and exercise our right to vote in this coming election tama okay Tsaka, Tony, siyempre, yung isang boto na yun, paano kung nag-tie? Tapos, hindi ka bumoto, eh, ikaw pala dapat Toss yung coin. tiebreaker, di ba? Wala. Toss coin, patay tayo dyan. But, there is an instance na kung saan, in the event that there is a tie, magkakaroon niya ng recount, of course. Okay. Siyempre, so, double check nila, baka naman nagkaroon lang. Kaya ka nagkakaroon ng canvassing stage mm-hmm. na sa election mo. Then again, if it really comes to it, then there will be a runoff na kung saan nagkakaroon ng election between the two candidates. Mm-hmm. And then, if talagang even on a runoff, nagkaroon ng tie, totoo ang toss ko. Yun nga, tama. <laughs> Hindi siya nalagay in the Constitution, but it is one of the resorts that's being used in the unlikely event na, na talagang makakaroon. tabla talaga. Yeah. Tabla talaga. Oh. Di, di ba, parang napa, may napanood akong ganyan eh, last election siya ata. Uh, local elections, tapos talagang tay na tay sila. So, parang nakakainis lang kung ikaw yung matatalo rin sa toss coin. <laughs> It's quite hard. Masaklap. <laughs> Masaklap. Oo, oh, saklap talaga. Alright, attorney, maraming maraming salamat. Hanggang dito na lang yung oras natin. Salamat sa pag enlighten sa amin. Kaugnay dito sa mga election laws. I and... helps. All right. Uh, please ba- vote. Oh, tama. Yan. So, pakinggan nyo si Attorney Alfred. Kailangan bumoto. Go out and vote. Have yourself counted. Kasi talagang importante sa inyo yan. All right. Uh, bago tayo tuluyan magtapos, uh, mapapanood po ang Kalinka Tribu Legal Diaries every Friday at 3.30pm sa Daily Tribune's official Facebook page at sa Tribune Now sa YouTube. Uh, para naman sa mga replay ng ating mga episodes. Alright, so uh, dito muna tayo ngayong araw na to. And uh, babalik po kami next Friday para sa isa na namang edisyon ng Kalingang Katribo Legal Diaries. 
Ako po si Elmer Navarro Manuel at magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. Botomoto Halalan 2022 The Daily Tribune Special Coverage